at 5.32, I'm going to call the Berlin School uh, Director's meeting to order. And I'm going to skip the reception of guests and agenda revisions and public comments and correspondence in future meetings uh, because I want to skip right down to 2.1, which is elected chairperson. So are there any nominations for chair of the Berlin School Board? So somebody has to make a nomination for the position. I nominate Vera Frazier as the chair. Are you willing to, is there a second? I'll second that. Are you willing to serve? Yes. Thank you, Vera. I'm assuming there aren't any other nominations. So without seeing none, all those in favor of Vera Frazier serving as chair for the Berlin School Board, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions. Thank you very much, Vera. Thank I you. really appreciate your leadership. Thanks. All right. So um, I guess I'll jump right back up and do 1.1 through 1.4 real quick. Yeah. So reception of guests. Dave Duncan, Orca, and Tiffany, thank you. Um, agenda review and revision. I don't have any. I have one. Okay. Today we received a letter asking for a year of leave of absence. So that would be under action agenda, probably 6 5, whether to approve a year of leave of absence. And I'm sorry, we just got it today, but we thought it was pertinent to bring it to you. Okay. Don't let me forget that. I have it right It's I've off to the side. It down here, and we have the letter right in front of us. Okay. All right. Is that it for? That's all for me. Public comments and correspondence. I do have, um, I have a couple of things from Corinne. Um, one of her questions is, is there a conversation going on with town regarding the school property doing something similar to um, Callis? And then she also had on here the uh, Athens and Grafton are looking to do something, I'm assuming, with their school building. So that was one piece, and I have to pass that around for people to look at it. And that's actually the warning for the Charles School for what they did last night? No. Yes, but there's some questions what we've done. Okay. So to share that piece and um, the other one was She had a question on policies. So once, so if the merger happened, will policies, will all the policies be adopted by the new board or will the policies that we currently have carry over? The new board will have to adopt policies before July 1. Okay. Perfect. That's on the work to be done. I, I was assuming that's what was yeah, actually, I've actually in the work. A conversation started two weeks ago and my office between Krista and I since we're usually the policy folks about trying to audit everything that's the same first so the, and most almost all the mandatory policies are the same across all the right I knew the work the, a lot the of rule was to get them as yeah. close to being so, the yeah. same as possible okay so that's all I have and um, future meetings I'm not sure that we want to set that date yet, or we no, can talk I about it until we go go yeah, let's go establish through. the time and date. Which we can I see up. that? Uh, yep. So, 2.2, elect a vice chair. Would you nominate someone else? I would nominate Nicole to be the vice chair. Okay. Are you willing? Yes. All those in favor of Nicole being the vice chair, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> 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 um, elect a clerk. So the clerk, for the most part, would take minutes. If we don't have somebody here to do that, we would typically always have somebody here to do that. And then there's usually Sometimes there's some, a some form there's usually a couple mm -hmm. of things that get signed where just the, the clerk's signature's in a different place. 
uh, because the clerk's in charge of all paperwork for the school district, so like bonds, and it just means that the clerk is approving that this is an authorized note when we do it, take in, take out in of taxes, which we probably won't be doing um, with this board. So I don't think there's really much activity to be done by the clerk. And, we, and as Kavir said, we usually always have petitions with us as secretary. Can I make a nomination as the Yeah, clerk? you can. Okay, so I'll nominate Julie O'Keefe to be the clerk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, Julie. All right, establish the time and date of a regular monthly meeting, which it's typically, so it's actually changed a little bit because we do our meetings for the full board sometimes in place of our local meeting here at Berlin. But I would still suggest to stay on the same schedule of our second Monday of the month at 5.30 here at Berlin unless they're at U32 for the yeah. full board meetings, of which they do the carousels after at U32. Unless anybody else has, if that doesn't work for people or have a different time date. I will say the Mondays, the second Monday of the month, I think is on the calendar, so somebody right. from the central office can be here, which is why it works well to not change it. Yeah, we have um, everything staggered. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just, yeah. So we'll continue with the second Monday at 5.30 at Berlin. And the newspaper is, oh, it's, is it still the Times Argus? We need the Times Argus, yeah. And the, Times Argus. the official postings, I believe, are the town clerk's office and the school, school building. School is right. We just need two. We'll put in many other places you want, but for this motion, two only. Does anybody have any questions on that one? What is the standard you use every year? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it does go other places, just like um, I know it's on our it's on the website. school website. It's um, often on Front Porch Forum. It right. is often on Corinne's News to Know. It gets and I believe it's it. also sometimes on the Berlin Town page for our regular schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so the, for, I don't, Sorry, but I don't know. Do we take a vote for the second day and Monday? Second Monday at 5 30 here? No. Um, I'll, can I do those as a slate or do you want them separate? You could do them as a slate if you want. Okay. And the, the Times Argus is because we always use the Times Argus as a paper record. Yeah. And uh, two it has to be two physical locations. We definitely do all the electronics. So. Right. And it does get posted at the central office and usually a couple other schools. All right, so I'll make a motion for the time and date of the regular monthly meetings to be the second Monday at 5.30 at Berlin. And the newspaper on record is the Times Argus and the locations for the official postings is the town clerk's office and the school. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Elect a representative representative and an alternate to the WCSU Executive Committee. So previously, when Chris Winters was the chair, he also was the Executive Committee person. I was his alternate. I have been going to the Executive Committee meetings since town meeting day, so that Berlin had somebody, represented, a representative there. Um, there have been many meetings um, during the month of March and into April. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a time commitment, for sure. And the meetings, um, we've met kind of all over the place with what we can make work for the most people to get to the meeting. So there's no set time, set date right now. The meetings are... They're sporadic. Yep. <laughs> a couple of issues. So, I'm not sure what everybody's time commitments can be and flexibility to be there. I'm willing to still do it. I'm willing to carry on. Um, right now, the main work that the executive committee is doing is um, the interim 
superintendent position. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure what you guys can we nominate way you to be the representative. <laughs> talk about all of these different different things first to see. Sure, be glad. Sure. That might be a little here. <laughs> just because both of us are. So the three voting members to the supervisory union board. Um, yeah, right. I mean, that's, we're, we're at the full board meeting. Um, that's so moved. We're, we're, we're there. Yes. Yep. So um, negotiations will be very, there's not really anything to do right now because we just finished until right. the fall. Mm -hmm. right. Can I just help a little bit here, maybe? Um, with, when you look at 2A um, right. and you see those three, those four committees, they are really, school quality and policy could be going, but they have not been meeting. Right. Um, it was recommended back in January or February from the executive committee for the SU committees to kind of pause. Um, if, um, you know, if merger happens, I don't see those committees coming together. If mergers stayed or put off a year, negotiations is going to probably be the one that's going to take the most amount of time because there's only a one year of teacher's agreement that we we're going to be presented with tonight in any one year ESP because okay. there was a law established last year that stopped all teach all contracts in the state from mm -hmm. going forward because of okay. health care. So, that's good to know. so I would just Maybe say that I think you could, you could come back and look at that if the situation you know, the current situation right now legally is that we are merging July 1, so I don't think there'll be much work there, but you could come back there and reappoint too. I agree with Vera. Vera, I think where the work is right now across the SU is at the executive committee, along with the uh, transitional board and then the merge board. Yeah. And the uh, member to the transition board is one? Or can, is it an alternate or a one? Or it, it's just, it's one because Chris Winters from uh, stepping down from the board was appointed earlier automatically and Vera was uh, appointed. And so Vera is still on the board, is still a member of the transition board. So you have one more, you need oh, to fill that's Chris's right. okay, place. Okay, that's why I was, okay, got it, got it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep, thank you for asking me, Nicole, that goes forward on that. And the truant officer is always the principal. Okay. District. Okay. So I think um, for less confusion, we will do them one at a time. So yeah. um, we can do the elect a representative and the alternate to the WCSU Executive Committee. So if somebody wants to make that nomination for two people, one for the main representative and then the alternate. Can there be two alternates? Or only one alternate? I've in the 11 years I've been on the board, it's only been just the two people, the main and then the alternate. Okay. Do you want to be the alternate, Nicole? Sure. Okay. But we need to elect a representative first. Right, correct? I think I was going to say, so I could say okay. that we're going to nominate Vera to be the representative and Nicole to be the alternate. Okay. Any other questions about that? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Right. Elect three voting members to the supervisory union board. As Stephen mm -hmm. said, that's pretty mm -hmm. much a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> so it will be the three of us. And I will make the motion for myself, Julie, and Nicole to be the voting members to the supervisory union board. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We still need to go through the process of um, mm. electing for each committee. Okay. Um, is there anybody that wants to or is willing to do negotiations? Like Bill said, it's nothing current right now, and as of the way the law is, we're still set to merge as of July 1, but not knowing exactly where that's going to end up. Negotiations will pick up around October ish. Probably. So around that time frame is when you guys would, when that committee would start meeting. Do I hear any 
interest from anybody. I will say I just served on it, and the meetings at the beginning half were, um, they were early morning meetings. They were not like huge time commitments, but towards the tail end of it, it was time consuming. Yes. <laughs> um, and it all varies depending on, like this time we only had a one year contract to deal with right. in healthcare. So we really didn't get into a lot of the nitty gritty stuff, right. which I'm assuming will come up the following contract negotiations. So I do think if we don't merge, if that negotiations might be, well again, I'll probably be on you yeah, because we'll be. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so is there any interest from either one of you on that? I also am on the school quality committee, so I definitely, um, I'm hoping that if the merger doesn't happen, that we can find two more people to rely on to spread out the workload, because it is, when you're only looking at three of us to do the workload, it's I a know. lot. I mean, I'm, I'm, my background, I'm more interested in transportation, probably school quality as well. Myself. Okay. I'm willing to do negotiations if you want to take on school quality. Okay. Because I, I don't feel like I'm in a place where I can do chair work, executive committee negotiations, and school quality. I, I got to give something up. Yeah, I, I agree. It's hard. Okay. Okay. So, um, what did you just say? <laughs> I I was I'm wanting to give up something. I'm yeah. willing to do negotiations. Nicole is going to willing to do school quality. Would you be willing to do, do transportation, transportation and policy? Transportation, they're not really doing anything right now. It only now. comes and when the contract comes. That what you I, wanted? Do, I mean, that's, I have a background in that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I could do that. So it's policy. So I can do policy. Okay. Unless it's very time consuming. Transportation is not. It's not. They it's not just when we do, just when we have to negotiate the contract or if we have a an issue going that gets really serious. Okay. We haven't had one luckily. So you're gonna stay with negotiations. <laughs> so I'm gonna make the motion right now. Okay. Unless you want to. No, go for it. Okay. So I'm gonna make a motion. Shut it down. To um, <coughs> so my motion is for myself to be on the negotiations committee, Julie on the policy committee, Nicole on transportation, and Nicole on school quality. Any other discussion about that? Not all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any All right. Appoint a truant officer. Truant officer. And like Bill said, it's typically the principal. So I will make a motion for Aaron Boynton to be the truant officer. Do you guys have any I questions? Second. No questions. No questions. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Appoint member to the WCUUSD Transition Board. So, there are several meetings coming up. It's definitely a time commitment. Um, Do you want me to list them? Yes, if you know them, I know great. Them I have them in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> They're next, they are tomorrow, and that one's at Calus from 4.30 to 6, uh, so that's the 25th of April. The rest of them we're trying to start at 6 o'clock and they're on Thursday, so it's the 2nd and 9th. And, and a Wednesday, the a Wednesday the 15th at 6 p.m. at all, we're trying to do them at central office for U32, just to get a little more centralized. Um, and this is to do what, exactly? So this is the transitional board. So the transitional board, and I'll, try to do my best to explain the work that they're doing right now. Um, set the articles of agreement amongst all the invested schools and um, they will get the warnings out for all of the upcoming like one board one budget that will mm -hmm. go out to the towns. Yeah, that's already gone out. And other than that, um, they have to prefer, uh, produce what's called by the Articles Agreement the first draft of the budget for the merge board. They also, without, and we'll be talking about this more tomorrow night, the transition board 
has all responsibilities and authorities without the new merge board seated. So if something comes up for the merger to happen, which because we're so close in time, there are things coming up. Um, that we'll be talking about some transitional issues tomorrow night that need to be tackled by this board to get things set so there's a smooth transition July 1st into a merge system. So this is to represent an elementary yep. in that board. That. So there's ten, there will be once Berlin ten get right? there. It's twelve members right now in the transition the way the article agreement. Once we get to a merge board, it's ten, it's two from each town. So there's a little nuance different in the way the articles were written. Okay. Anything anybody's interested in? There's definitely a lot of meetings coming up. And right. The meetings that are coming up are actually the most important meetings because those are the ones that are we're working on the articles of agreement. Now, with that said, there was an articles committee that did a lot of the work and worked through a lot of those pieces for the articles of agreement. But there's definitely some little nuances that still need to be worked out amongst the towns because there's definitely some difference in opinions on future representation, how many from each town. So there's definitely some pieces in there that um, that work that will be done in the immediate couple of weeks is really important work. Because my hope would be once the articles are written and everybody agrees to them, that's... Maybe send out to a vote. We still have to go out to the electric vote. Right, so they'll still go out to the towns for a vote. Or either of you willing to that's fine, want to? Yeah, I mean, so I probably should know, but if George is already engaged in that discussion, it's he's not. Engaged he's not. not he's not. Engaged. Okay. He's not going to represent you there too. Okay. Yep. I can if you want me to. Yeah. Like that would be tough. The time commitment for me right now. Okay. okay. Do you want to make the so I make a motion for Nicole to represent us on that board? Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Thank you, Nicole. Aye. So like Bill said, we do have a meeting tomorrow night, which I understand is super last minute for yes. uh, I have some for you, actually. Um, it is at Callis at 4.30. Yeah. So um, if you can't make it, I totally understand. OK. We will. Um, Either Krista or myself, somebody can get you whatever was yeah, discussed. Did you get, did you get the, 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 the packet for this one? I had asked Krista to. For this one, I did, yes. Yes, okay. Because I had asked her to make sure you were on the list, Nicole. So we'll make sure somebody gets you whatever um, information we get tomorrow at the meeting so you don't have to make a motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Yeah, that will give you the same packet. There was another one before that. I, I want to make sure I'll make sure tomorrow that she, you're on the okay. group list of the transitional board meeting. But that is one that gives you the same thing because I sent it to all board members just to make sure. I'm not sure about tomorrow, but I'll try. Okay. Over here. Yeah. So moving on to the consent yeah, agenda, uh, approved minutes of two thirteen and three four. I'll make motion to approve the minutes of three, two thirteen and three four. I didn't have any questions on them. They looked fine to me. Did anybody else have any questions on the minutes? No. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Discussion agenda: the driveway. It is so much better. <laughs> so literally there was a, um, I want to thank Chuck, he went and did most of the work for us in the air. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, got two, two or three people just to give us an idea. We said, let's keep it under 15,000. So what you see is what's going to get patched from where it is to now. Uh, it, it was really a wait for the frost to come out. We had, you know, 
they're coming. When are they coming? Um, it's first full week of May, I think it's the like the sixth or seventh. And they'll put a finishing coat on the top. They're going to pitch it a little bit, so hopefully it won't build up as much water. Cause in my opinion, a big part of the problem is just pools of water there. Mm -hmm. We've been told by people in the business that what we have underneath is really good. Yeah, really good, yeah. So that's good to, to know. Um, so, yeah, Chuck did a lot of the background work to get um, some some uh, um, costs. And, um, yeah, we, we needed to wait for the frost to yeah. get out. Yeah, that was the big issue. Yeah. So they tore that up, obviously. Um, and they repurposed that and recycle it to use again and put so a fresh layer on there. The only question I do have is when Green Mountain Paving is here doing mm -hmm. that stretch, um, do they have a patch that they can just patch those other two holes out there and still stay under that 15,000? We'll find a way to make sure those so I thought as I drove in. So okay. we'll, find, we'll find a way to make sure those other holes are I had talked to Chuck about it, <laughs> and I just want to make sure that We'll find Everybody a way. We'll find a way. The, the, other, the other thing I'll say is, that, you know, this is a this is a year or two fix. It's not a right. long term fix. Um, yeah. Okay. Chuck this and is I to get a, this is to get us through. Deep conversation about this. I mean, this we know because we did we drill cores of that of what's underneath there, and to really s fix it for 10, 12 years, we <coughs> some serious digging. Right. And so, so right so now so it's, it's a ton better than it was. I'd rather yeah. drive on state map <laughs> than to drive on the way it was. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's just on the next agenda if we could get an update that doing something with the pop holes. Well, we'll I think sure. I think I think it'll be done by. The, I hope it's done by then. Right. I hope they're full in. If they're not, you should be saying, "What did you do, guys?" <laughs> well, we can we can always do that as a separate. I just say some get some item. We you know, get some we get some coal patch. And yeah. Take care. Yeah, that's that's patch those. Okay. So we'll get it fixed and figured out. It's a day's worth of work. Yes, for that out there. For that yes. Yes. Yeah. And they're not going to, um, traffic won't be stopped. People can still come and go. So I don't have to worry about not getting in or out. So I'm assuming they'll do half at a time. Yeah. Roll it, put the stuff down, roll it, and then do the other half. So it's always accessible. Yeah, I'll figure it out. And do parents know updates on this? I, I would think they would love to know what's going on. I think I put something in the last. I did put a, some correspondence out about that we're going to be working on fixing it. I think at that time I wasn't that specific with this, but um, yeah. Okay. What about the parking lot itself? <laughs> so, yeah, so the parking lot we've looked at a couple times in renovations here, and it can be done, but it's very. So it can't be lost. fully paved. Because of the wet lands on the back side, so you oh, have to shorten it up some. I do know that. Yeah, there's some pieces on that. We also get the stormwater issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> okay. And then, well, um, and then it's usually been a cost factor. We do have, I mean, the school owns one of those DR graders, which usually keeps it pretty well during the summer. It's just, okay. it's getting it's through, it's, it's getting through our mud season right yeah. now. Yeah, and Chuck just did it. Monday, I think he was yeah. working on it. Yeah. He so did it as much as he can, but you know, but I just, as a new to Brunei, I had no idea. Why is this place like this? Yeah. At the time. Nope. Yeah. Is it money that's really the issue? No, I mean, you you get it done, to, or is it the we'd have to go, we'd have to go, we'd have to go get a bunch of engineering done. We need to do it for the whole driveway, but for that, right. we're probably going to incur, I don't know, what, about two, Nicole, you're a civil engineer, so it's two or two times the driveway square footage to yeah. pave all that. Right. And we're going to have to put in drainage, and we're going to be in, we're going to be in a waste, we're going to be in a watershed permit and runoff area. We're dealing with that with other schools right now, where the Agency of Natural Resources is after us because of our, runoff, our water runoff. Right. Uh, we're working. We're on a phase two up at Romney right now, and we're going into a phase something at U thirty two, um, and it gets quite expensive. Yeah, it would be nice to at least 
maybe not necessarily painting it, but at a point where we could just put Steve on down and have it packed down to a point where it doesn't get so muddy. Yeah. For this I, I would like to see it paved. It's going to help the yeah. upkeep of this building. Oh, inside. absolutely. You know, we keep the, the dirt from coming in. So. Do we not? I thought that they looked at it when we did the bond for this, that we had got like a really good general idea of what it would cost to include we, Just that. for the did driveway. Not? Just uh, the round. Right. Just the driveway. The, the driveway, driveway itself at that point was $185,000. I think we always we steered away from <laughs> the great. driveway because of well, the water issues. The okay. salt is coming in all the ground. I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, and that's what's getting our cross I mean, we can definitely have a future agenda item to it's going to be yeah. a forever agenda item in its current state, right? Well, we can talk about it every year, as we already do, don't we? Well, the <laughs> paving of that driveway has always been kind of separate from the roundabout okay. part, or I guess the parking lot versus the right. driveway. Right. Um, but if we're going to get quotes and look at it for, um, I'm not sure. I mean, exactly the, next, the next step would be. We would be, you know, we, we have an idea from when we did the part of uh, the, um, you know, what it's going to cost for the driveway in the circle. We could probably just scale off the drawings, what that cost is per square footage cost, and say what that, and kind of extrapolate that for the parking lot. Mm -hmm. If we want it, but that's going to be, that's kind of back of the envelope pricing. Mm -hmm. If we want anything more, then we're going to be engaging a civil engineer, because, you know, John, Hemelgar from Black River Design, who's been our architect, he does this, but right away he would sub it out to a civil. Uh, he's helped, we have a civil engineer on the track project up at U32 right now that's been really great to work with. Um, I was actually thinking that yesterday as we were starting kicking off the track project of their knowledge and what that would mean we'd want to start spending money on. We'd have to start getting into a contractual relationship. John works by the hour for us right now to kind of give us advice and help us, but if we were going to get into that, then we'd get into a contractual place to start getting an engineer and survey. Because they're going to start looking at what's the watershed and tell us about, you know, how close can we, what's the agency of natural resources going to tell us, what are they going to tell us about stormwater runoff, and how do we, do we have to have a settling pond, or do we have to have some sort of filtrate? So that's what we're dealing with the U32. We're having to build a small pond now by the field hockey field for stormwater runoff from the track. That's so crazy. <laughs> and you would think highway, Walmart, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of paved areas around that. It's just crazy. Yeah, I, I know. I just have been down this road with yeah. two or three other schools. So it's not it's not impossible to not. Be right, you're right. You're right. It goes right. It's very difficult, which I think is why it's always just stay dirt, get it graded, bring in a couple of whatever when it works, and that goes on. But I mean, it definitely would help with the upkeep and the maintenance. In the school, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe look at all, all of it. Okay. All right. Four point two easement. So um, this is an item that, if you look back to the notes from February, we've been working with the town of Berlin for a sewer easement to replace the sewer line coming out of this building. And if you remember from the meeting, well, I don't think, Vera, you and I would remember, Nicole, I don't think you were there, uh, but it's going to go out the back, go over, it's going to bridge the valley. They won't be able to come above ground out here for a little bit and then go back in the ground because of the grade. Um, the, as a board, you asked for Tom, I forget Tom's last name, works over the town, and myself to work on an easement. Um, and we took care of that through our attorneys. So I have an easement here with me. Um, that's the signature for the town of Berlin's easement. Um, but if you can either appoint myself to sign it, or one of you can sign it, 
but it needs to be done in front of a notary. So we can't actually sign anything, so if we have anyone around here who's a notary right now. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's it's a land easement that we had talked about. We started back in January with, I think it was December, January, so we're working with the town mm -hmm. on this. And this is a good thing to do. I mean, they're going to, we'll have a, mm -hmm. a replacement sewer line and they'll have an easement to come on our property and put that in place. And we're trying to do it when the kids aren't here. And that where it's our hope, it may happen in the fall, but I don't think that schedule's been, unless you've heard anything new, Aaron, about what that schedule is. No. So this is a follow up of work that's. So some of the history is under 3.2 yep. in the minutes. Um, yeah. Do either of you have any questions on this? No. 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 Okay. So being that nobody can notarize it tonight, I will make a motion to authorize Bill Kimball to sign the easement on behalf of the Berlin School Board. Is that the correct word? That works. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, Bill, could you send a copy of that easement to the three of us? Yes, yes. Um, when you're back yep. in the office. Definitely. Thank you. It's a pretty simple easement <laughs> of, of ones I've seen in the past. This is about as easy as it gets. Um, I actually had a question mark, and I actually meant to ask this earlier in the agenda review and revisions. Appointing two members to board under 4.3, I'm yeah. not sure what that is. That's where you have three members of a five-member board. We thought oh, we'd give you a discussion. To, okay. The discussion item to say, do you, yes. would you like to talk about that? It so is I just assume, to now. <laughs> and you, Vera, you and I talked at the beginning of the month, yes. and we kind of put this agenda together. So I can totally understand that that was just about... If there were two that wanted. If you knew of anybody interested. or how you wanted to go mm -hmm. looking for two more members because you're a five member board. So, does anybody have any, anyone that you know of that would be willing to serve from now until possibly June 30th? Or, in the event that we don't merge, it would be through Mark Tabby of 2020. Any anybody you can reach out to? I would just say put put it on the website, put it in front porch forum. The way I saw it was on the website. And then I mean it was not once I I kept having to see it. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a pretty You're very being busy. real. You're right. being real. That's how we are. We have so many things bombarding us, so I think we have the word so we can. Yeah. Maybe another. You can take care of that. People might like yeah, that. It's only yep. temporary. You know, just for a little bit. We can definitely do that. All right. Reports to the board. So I don't know that, I mean, a lot of the reports in here because we're so far off our regular schedule. Aaron's pretty, schedule. You would, when I read your report, yours is pretty up to date. You wrote that right around. I added from. Yeah, I added you added to it. <laughs> it goes back quite a ways, but I know. We've been for a while. All right. So, so let's start with. Um, we'll start with your report, Aaron. If there's anything you want to highlight in it, obviously we've all read it. Um, and just so folks know, I provide a principal's report each uh, board meeting and um, try to highlight things that have been you know exciting, different. Um, try to put some school-wide things, some student things, um, but even some more staff, school-based logistical kinds of things just to keep you guys in the loop about certain things that we might be doing as a system. Um, any kinds of maintenance things that might not be on the specific banner agenda, I'll try to highlight a few things around that. So I'll try to give a big picture of a number of different things mine before. So it is pretty long just because uh, I had kept what would have been the March meeting stuff in there. So we have stuff going all the way back to winter wellness, which was in February. Um, so, you know, I don't have to read every single piece of it. Um, we've had some uh, um, unique things happen these last couple of months. Um, the gentleman whose name is William Harris, uh, he lives in Middlebury. He's a motivational speaker. He came to 
Berlin um, Elementary spoke with grades three to six back in February. And uh, I think everybody really enjoyed his message around ports of education and, and respect. Um, just very motivating. And uh, he came back for a, a classroom visit follow-up a couple weeks ago, and the kids were happy to see him. Um, so it was nice to have him here um, talking about uh, and reinforcing um, those important important messages. Um, one thing that I've been working on with a committee here at the school that I'll talk about, and it's under the MTSS EST part of my report. Uh, EST is Educational Support Team, MTSS is Multi-Tiered Systems of Support. And um, when I came on board, we had a, a, a handful of different committees that overlapped with what we were doing around student support, around um, um, you know how we look at student progress and, and um, how our systems of, of, of uh, support work. So I helped decide that we really can benefit with having one team or committee to do this work because it's really a bunch of different people doing almost the same thing. So we've done a lot of work this year in um, talking about what our future student support structure might look like. Um, we have a, an, an action plan. Um, I'd be happy to share that at an upcoming board meeting. Um, it really looks a number of different things around you know, support in the classroom, uh, tier one classroom instruction, um, how we determine students for intervention, how it kind of flows with uh, if teachers have um, concerns about a student, how we incorporate all of the behavior, behavioral work that we've been doing around PBIS and our um, uh, systems of support around that. So it's kind of putting it all together, making it a little bit more understandable um, and cohesive across, across the whole school so all the pieces just fit a little bit better. Um, so that's been a lot of the work that we've been doing this year and uh, it's gonna be a, a, a long process until we get to um, a more solid ground, but it's been underway. So that's been good. Um, I have some pieces about the facility in here. Um, things have been going well in regards to the facility. Um, over the breaks, I mean, we've had a lot of student sickness this year. It's just been happening at all the schools, so uh, they've done a really good job trying to go above and beyond with a little more of a deep cleaning type of type of process. Um, done some painting over the over the vacations. Um, our PTNA graciously has been improving our staff room, um, so we would like to thank them for some of the work that they've been doing there. Not done yet, but uh, um, it's really great that they supported that. Some of the changes there. Um, we have some things from the summer that um, we're going to follow up on the. The front entrance, I'm sure you've seen that on a rainy day or when we've had a lot of the snow melt, it ironically just drips right in front of <laughs> the walkway and the entrance. Um, we had the gentleman from the company come and look at it in the fall and he said we definitely, you know, they definitely have to fix this. Um, so the plan was that when the weather got better, um, they're going to come back and, and uh, fix it. They seem to be maybe something to do with the pitch of the water flow, I mean obviously. so. Um, we'll be on top of that. And um, um, what's that mentioned here? the driveway, obviously, we've been attacking as well. Um, another piece that we've, we've kept an eye on <coughs> and actually have initiated a fix is one of some of the, I guess, some of the, the air, air handlers, and it sounds like this was maybe a more historical thing, um, uh, would get the condensation would gather in them um, and uh, would some, some would, would leak. Um, we had one in the conference room that was doing that this winter and um, tried to try to patch it for a short term fix didn't quite work so um, we decided we need a specialist to come in and fix that right <laughs> so it's not not doing that anymore. Um, if you look on the roof we have this funny looking looks like a greenhouse up there, but it's part of the part of the, the air handling unit. Um, so 
it will be fixed. Um, we'll keep an eye on how that goes in the future with with, uh, with that stuff. So those are just some highlights. I don't know if anybody has any questions about anything else that's going on. Um, end of the year is coming, and it's a good, good busy time. A lot of end of the year activities that are happening. Teachers working hard to think about all the things we got to do at the end of this year, but also gearing up for some things for, for next year as well. So keep getting there. So speaking of next year, um, so the SU is implementing a new math program. Yeah. Um, the implementation will start right away with K through sixth grade. And this will transition them to the middle school, U32, for seventh, eighth grade. I'm hoping that there's, um, with this program, a closer link as to what they end with at the elementary schools and start with a U32 versus having so that gap. That I know you exists. remember this year. We spent, we held off on getting a math program because we wanted to make sure the math curriculum was set. That was the um, standards that was used when looking at a math program is that um, they had to fit our curriculum progression. That's pre-K through graduation. Ready Math has a middle school version that we're debating whether we go with it or not at the middle school just because it's brand new. Um, and then that we're looking at that. We were looking to implement new programs, elementary, middle, and high all next year. And the math committee, which is all math teachers pretty much, and our math specialists said, hey, let's slow this down a little bit and get it right. Okay, that's, so, I guess but, that was the bottom but, line of our question. So, answer. but, the, but you, well, the, I heard your bottom line is, is more as, do we have the continuum so we don't have gaps? And yes. what I wanted to assure but you is that we, we, built, go with the we, built, we built the, well, we haven't purchased where we're going. We, we might go with ready math for the middle school, and that's still being talked about. That still may happen this year. Okay. That decision hasn't been finalized. We, that authority to make that decision has been given to the committee of the teachers that are doing the work. They, uh, but it's the math curriculum and the progressions that we've set up. Those are all the standards for what we're setting, which is all based on the common core. So, okay. so it's still to be decided for the middle school, but it's been decided for K through six. Right. Yeah. We think, and we think ready math. I mean, that was a big discussion. And Aaron, you know, we talked about a leadership team. Jen's kept us in the loop about should we go to ready math all the way up to eighth grade, which may happen. I, I don't think it hasn't been said it won't happen. I just don't think there's been a conclusion of that. Because they said they built their elementary first, so it's already been out in schools for about a year and a half. Okay. And this is, the, this is what usually happens in any curricular area when standards are set. It takes about five to eight years for the programs to move to meet the standards that have been set nationally. So we're, we're four years, four to five years now with the Common Core. Other programs said they were common core aligned, but there was just tweaks to old programs that weren't there. We're starting to see now the new programs come about that are truly aligned to the common core progression. So. We'd like it. You know, and it, it's a resource, it's a tool. It's probably 65 to 70% of what the curriculum is. There isn't a program out there that has everything. They just don't exist. Did anybody else have any other questions in the principal's report? I do. The MTSS EST, is that parents and teachers? Or is that just teachers? The team? Uh, this team? In house. It's just an in house team. In house team. Yeah. So I have teacher, special educator, nurse, um, guidance. Okay. And then what's the Orton Gillingham? Yep, so that is um, a. Um, an approach to, to reading. Um, a lot of, there are a number of, of actual programs that are based on um, the work that Horton Gillingham had done years ago. Um, the best way to, to describe it is it's more of understanding the English language at its core when it comes to how words um, are, are, are built. Um, so it's, 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 it's more of a phonics-based look at um, 
I want to say instruction, but just an, an understanding of 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 of, of uh, how our uh, English language words are 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 put together. Um, I took the course a couple of years ago, and uh, it was one of the best courses I'd ever taken. Um, and it's really this is meant to uh, not say that. I'm expecting teachers to all of a sudden, you know, we're not going to necessarily say we're going to move towards something that we're going to get a program around phonics, but more of that they understand um, the core of, of, of teaching this language to the kids. Um, so throughout the next few years, I want everyone to at least go to this introductory training course um, to just get a taste of what what it is and um, what it can offer if they choose to go a little bit further because you can, you can do more through this program um, in regards to training. So next year I do have a number of folks that would like to go um, and it will just help, help with their understanding of, of our reading. Bill, do you have any highlights of anything on the committees that maybe are not represented in this packet? Um, I'm going to talk about negotiations when we get to the action. Yep. Executive committee is in the packet. It's in the packet. School and policy and policy haven't met, so I wouldn't have anything on that. And then I can do the finance when you're ready for that. Okay. Why don't we jump to page 12 for finance? So um, I'm going to slow this down and explain this a little bit here. The, on page 12, you see what we look at, um, we call this our fund balance sheet, and it takes a look at where are we in relativeness. At the top of the page, you will see the after audit beginning balance of $300,207. So for, for school year 2000, 17 2018 so last J july 1st we ended after we were, went through our auditors of that fund balance left and what the fund balance is is the amount of money that's in the checking account and loosely i'm saying checking account but in the account for berlin school that says this is the amount of money the cash we have right now and we look at that and say okay for the next year the voters in Berlin give authority to the school board through an item that's done every year at annual meeting that the school board has the authority to spend that audited fund balance so it's on top of the budget as they see fit. It's actually a really generous thing the voters do. Um, so it's not targeted towards, towards a certain use. The board can determine that. What you'll see after that is we start looking at the current year, and are there? These are all projections below this. Mm -hmm. Laurie Bebo, her projections are usually about in the 98 percentile correctness, if not higher. So they're usually pretty accurate. But there, if we ch see changes in revenue, we'll see them in that first part, or changes in expenses. So, for example, in. And we do big true-ups three times a year, September, January, and right about now, April, May. Uh, we're getting ready to do it for May. If something happens that we don't foresee, either a building expense or a student expense, you might, or a staffing expense, you might see those as other months. So the reason in September is because we usually have new staffing and we readjust all the um, payroll. But you'll see under revenue, interest income, we thought that it was actually um, our revenue there would go down about $551. You'll see there's a balance to that for the expense. That's maybe a bad one. But reserve for health care insurance for recapture, that was done the previous year. The board, board, board action back in September 2017, this was responding to some state legislation. They set aside fund balance money to be expended so we didn't have to budget it for this current fiscal year. 
So you see a deduction of the overall fund balance out of that 303,000 of 9,760. Okay. You'll st you start. To, that's the revenue changes. The expense changes down below are. I'm going to go down to the second line. Salary benefit update. School wide primary health insurance. It's a negative because it wasn't as high as we thought it was going to be. Because when we when we put in for personnel, sometimes we have to make estimates because we may not know who we're hiring or we may not know their benefits. So it's actually saved us sixty nine hundred dollars there in health insurance. So you'll see that up and down through there, and, and uh, we could go back and talk about any of those. At the bottom, you get what is the current fund balance projected at the end of this year. And Julie, I heard earlier viewers kind of give you a, a, a quick tutorial on this. We're at $202,557. That's our projected, that's what we think it's going to be June 30th, 2019. So this is a projected fund balance. We, um, and that you see the nut right next, and that percentage of 5.8% is off the voter approved budget, which is right above a $3.5 million, kind of above and to the right. Mm -hmm. We have a target that we usually try to keep about 4% of fund balance for a school this size. Sometimes those changes depending on size of school, either bigger or smaller. One of the things that we do that the board took action on earlier in FY17 and 18 to, so we don't have peaks and valleys in the technology equipment funding around the building, we make it so it's one constant cost every year. And so we kind of made our own little reserve fund there. So that's set aside. Um, I actually know some of that's going to get used for next year because just we have life cycles of technology. So the ch current fund balance, if you take that 22000 out, is $179,787, which you see below it says it's $39,350 above the 4% target. Okay. I'm going to stop for a minute. And I just told you a lot really quickly, but just kind of how this reads. And usually each month when there's a new line added, we go over what those lines are. Okay, so we're projecting that, that that's what will be kind of in the, that will be in the account at the end of this fiscal year. There's also on page 13 other special discretionary funds that have been set up by the voters or through grants. The biggest one is a capital fund. And this, what you see above the new bond construction part, so all these boxes, if you look above these boxes right here, is the current capital fund. We came in this year with a 350, 135,000 and change. Um, we had we transferred extra in. The board did action earlier on this year, along with what came in. We had a little bit of expense. We had some transfer in from the bond, what was left over in the construction. So at the end of this year, we're projecting, and currently right now we do have 292,111 dollars in the capital fund. So as we were talking about the driveway out there of 185,000, that's the area I'd be looking at because we don't have it in our budget right now to pay for something like that. Um, what is down below, and this will all go away after this fiscal year, but is the bond that we've used for the renovations here. So we had to track that a different way. And what we had left over at the end of the whole bond was $6,343 we didn't expend on the bond. That just went right up in the capital fund because what that wouldn't really do anything to the payments that we're doing, and we're allowed to do that. Questions on that capital fund? Because that's one to understand. That's how we take care of all the upkeep. Outside the supplies, maintenance, we have about 25000 I think, in repair maintenance every year. But when there are things that, need to, that are larger, we have to go to that. Uh, down below you start to see grants, um, those are usually in and out. We have our food program, which I'm going to talk about on another page, and then we have student activities from, which is anything from trips to book drives to, Aaron, you're going to have to help me with what else we run through student activities. It's 
just athletics. Athletics, yeah. yeah. So yeah. all that kind of runs in that its own little font. These are, if you want, my analogy for this is these are different accounts that run with them. That's helpful, thank you. Too much, too little? No, it was helpful. Okay. Um, if you go to the next page, you'll see the food service, and here it was very helpful right when I came aboard seven years ago to really say, hey, we need a better accounting. And you helped us get to this page, Vera, when you said, you know, we need to know more about the food service program. So we, in this next page, you'll see revenues at the top, and we do multi-years of what's been happening um, to the projected for this year at the end of this year, FY 1819, which is all the way on the right. So you'll see revenue coming in and expenses going out. And you'll see that this year, right now, we're projecting that we're going to have, without any help from the school, we would have a 20, I'm um, down where it says profit loss operations A minus B is about $25,000 below. But we had made, when we budgeted for this year, we planned on $25,000 of support coming from the school budget. So right now we're right on target to meet that piece. Um, this is, as you can see, the past two years, we've had thirteen dollars and $18,000 of actual support, so it's actually increased the bottom line fund of the food fund, which you see down below, beginning fund balance and fund balance. Um, we'll know more on true up at the end of this year. I think the last thing we had a food audit, mm -hmm. a nutrition audit by the state three weeks ago, four weeks ago, yeah, which was mainly fiscal, but it was our menu audit as well, yeah. and we were doing pretty well, yeah, but it just hasn't hit these projections. Because this projection hasn't been adjusted since January or February, I don't think. When they did that food audit, too, they audited the popcorn program. Yeah. Just yeah. FYI. Yeah, no, they I did. Made yeah. a they did. Yeah. I was actually here popping popcorn in the. Oh, good. <laughs> they were not, they were like, <laughs> what about, um, I'm not sure that oil is really good. Lunch but paid for it actually, it's not that bad. Government might be paying for it. So, so if you look up in, um, in mm -hmm. revenues, You'll see fe oh, federal reimbursement for lunch and for, for breakfast. Part of the audit. And so that's the money that we get for the feds. Huh. Good to know. Good to know. Very, very strict. So we're actually doing pretty well here. Berlin, when we look at it uh, compared to other schools on meal served per day per FTE, um, the 76, like up at U32, were at 59 or 60. Per FTE that work, so we're running, we're serving quite a few meals for the FTEs. We have we're doing a good job. That's all the way down at the bottom. We try to track, you know, we try that meals served per day per FTE. The bottom line of the second yeah. to the lowest box, and then we look at enrollment and percentage of kids eating lunch and breakfast. So, um, Brooklyn's got a pretty high percentage compared to most of the schools that are eating lunch in the school. Uh, and you've got pretty good. So all in all, the food program has really made a turnaround since I've been here. Yes, that's great. Yeah. So that's my fiscal report. We will. We're closing down right now. Lori and Aaron have been going through. We talked about purchase orders earlier. Julie and I explained the system. Uh, there, it's not that we can't get stuff right now, but we try to say, hey, we're getting to the end of the year. If there's an open purchase order for something, we need to figure out if we need to pay any more bills toward get shut down. Lori is very efficient and she likes all her paperwork in by May. Yep. <laughs> and she gets pressure. So don't be spending any money after that. And she gets pressure from Lori Bebo, the business it's manager in my office, like, let's get this thing done. <laughs> it, be, it better be like a necessity to after that. So that's my financial report. I'd be glad to take any questions, concerns, comments. Looks good. Thank you, Bill. So we do have the action um, agenda, but I want to jump back up to 1.4 for future meetings because mm -hmm. we went over that so that we don't. So I have our regular main meeting with the May 13th. Yep, that's why I have to. Um, June is a full board meeting month. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is it? So I believe that that's July? happening the first Wednesday. Let me get to my calendar here. Okay. Um, so that we'd have May 13th. <clears throat> 
that's the Berlin. And then we would have June 5th. The carousel. Would be the carousel at U32. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then we typically don't meet in July. Um, yeah. I'm sure things will come up. Yeah. I'm, as yeah, I'm going to say it's going to, it's, but we're going to have to get further down the road. Right. Past June. So just for those, those are the two that I have for now that I need. Definitely the other as regular June 15th? June 5th. 5th. For the carousel, but what about the Berlin? Mm. Usually with the carousel months, we don't That's right. do we're gonna here. do it. It'll be at E32. Oh, great. Like that. That's right. okay. Now back down to the action agenda. Um, so I'll make the motion to. Authorize the easement agreement with the town of Berlin. Actually, didn't I already? You did that, that already. I did I that, already. that already. Right, Tiffany, we did that. Yes, we yes. did because mm -hmm. I authorized you to sign a bill. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, approved teacher contract for academic year 2019-2020 as negotiated by the negotiations committee. Um, you guys need some um, information about that, which. Um, the biggest piece was health care and the salary increase. So I'm not sure exactly how much. So I can go for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in the teachers' contract, the that's there were members representing every board that were on that negotiating team, and we ended at a 3.1 percent increase for salaries. And for health care, we had something that was cost neutral to the teachers. I caught now uh, cost neutral to the district and to the teachers. We have a we base everything off of what's called the CDHP Gold Plan, which is our four plans by our healthcare provider, VHI, which is Vermont Education Health Initiative. Um, this plan has a high deductible of twenty five hundred for a single and five thousand for for family or two person. But those are supported by healthcare reimbursement accounts. Those accounts were split at 90% paid for by the district and 10% by the individual, where the employees had the first dollars in. They had to pay the first 10%. It was uh, being hard. It was hard to manage and a hard transition for our teachers. And so what was agreed upon, and that and the premium split was 82% by the district and 18% by the teacher. It was agreed upon at the negotiations that the premiums would actually get to be 80-20 with the HRA fully funded by the district. That was seen as almost a cost, a, a zero shift in cost. I mean, there was, there was some cost in there, but very little compared to the $11 million worth of teacher contract we were negotiating. So uh, there was agreement to split it to become 80-20 and 100% of the HRA covered. Um, and so that, and these are one-year contracts, so there's nothing else done in the teacher's contract. And that has been ratified by all other, the other five, well, other six boards with supervisory union had to ratify for teachers that were with supervisory union office. It was actually, a, it was a pretty, when we got to the healthcare piece, that was the biggest piece, it was, because it was almost a cost neutral on both ends, it was a kind of a no brainer. Because the old system was very administrative heavy for both central office and the third party, so it was a benefit all the way around to do this. Yeah, so it, was, it was a good, a good change for everybody, which um, I think everybody benefited from it too, so, which is good to have a cost neutral and everybody benefited. Any other questions about mm -hmm. negotiations, please? I do have um, so if you have. So I will make a motion to approve teacher contracts for the academic year 2019-2020 as negotiated by the negotiations committee. There's no further questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Any 
and um, approve ESP contract for academic year 2019-2020 as negotiated by the Negotiations Committee. Want me to go with that? Sure. Okay. So this was, we met with the uh, ESP stands for Educational Support Personnel. So this covers in this building the paraeducators, the food service workers. Um, Chris in the office doesn't. Lori is not covered because of some of the work she has to do for her. Uh, our custodians are not bargaining in this building as well. The um, this contract has a 3.5 percent salary increase. And the healthcare followed exactly what the teachers did. They actually joined for the healthcare negotiation, so we were doing both contracts at the same time. Uh, we also did change a few working conditions in here, uh, some being uh, we identified a new class of employee, not a new class, but a recognition of folks who are doing behavior intervention supports and personal care for kids, which is a little above what a paraeducator does, so there's some support money in for that. Um, there's some technology supports for personnel, our paraeducators in school have a hard time getting to, you know, we're doing, as you guys know, we're, and you do too in your lives, everything's going through technology, so it's only right for us to support them with a device, electronic device to do that. Um, and those are the major pieces, Vera, I forget what else I'm missing from that contract, but. Um, it was a pretty good contract negotiations. We did it in one night. Yeah, I just I had the the health care which they did with the yeah. initial negotiations. We actually combined it right, yeah. one night, and then the salary increase and the technology piece with some yeah. type of a Chromebook or something like that. So you can do their do email, and we have a bunch of things we use for personnel, like a sub finder and tracking when people are out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so they need. So I'll make the motion to accept, to approve the ESP contract for ac academic year 2019-2020 as negotiated by the Negotiations Committee. There's no other questions about that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And um, I'm sorry, well, I didn't pass this around to you. Did you sign? I didn't sign it. I didn't know you wanted me to sign it. You can sign it anywhere as long as you feel comfortable with signing it. We do get a chance if you have any questions. To ask questions. Retirement. So our dear colleague Kay McHugh is retiring from an outstanding long professional service to the Berlin community. I'm very sad to see her go. I totally understand. Yeah. Kay McHugh. So I will make a motion to accept Kay McHugh's retirement with. Um, many thanks for her years of service to Berlin and to our community, well, school and community. Any other questions? No. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And I wish her well in her retirement. We will try to make sure your three of you are included in knowing when you're I'm sure there'll be something. She's out. She's out right she now. She is. Cause I saw out. her when she was coming in on her crutches, one of the nice dates when I was working yeah. on the yearbook, and I got a chance to see her. So yeah, we have, we have to find a way of recognizing her. So we'll do that. Okay, perfect. I'll let you know. All right. Um, approved board orders. So we had a six point five that I asked. Oh, right. to, oh yes, yes. We just received. I forget. Today. I knew I would forget. <laughs> you want to talk you to it? <laughs> Put it off to the side. It blends in. No, no. I think you just say. No, it's an ask for leave of absence if they want to go into more reason than we might want to go into that position. So I got a request um, from Kimberly Ferrone for a one year unpaid leave of absence starting July this year to next year. Um, that's her request. I can 
entertain any questions or and she she as you know she was on the board approved a sabbatical for her and then she decided she needed to not use that sabbatical and this would have been the year she would have had her sabbatical so we can't really um, so we can accept it, but we can't really ask any questions when it's a personnel issue like this without going into executive session. So if you guys have questions, we can certainly make the motion to go into executive session. I, uh, my questions wouldn't be personal. They would be more about so how do we cover that work with her absence? Yeah. Like how do we talk about that or do we? So we, we go out, we'd be in a hiring process for a one year replacement. Okay. And it might be that someone from the school, and I've talked to Aaron about this, so he might yeah. have better knowledge than I. It might be someone in the school does that work for a year, okay. and we hire for their position, or he says, let's go out and look and see what's out there. And the principals always have that, they have that call. Right. Not my call. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on. But we basically, somewhere, somewhere there's going to okay. be a one year, yeah. one year, uh, one year contract for a teacher, someone with a teacher license, because we're using someone with a teacher license, so right. we're looking for someone with a teacher license. And so how does that go against, does she have a contract, so it, so what it she's pauses been, her contract for that year? Yeah. It absence? basically leaves her slot. Yeah. By the board granting a one-year leave of absence to any personnel, you're saying, okay, you have a job to come back to, right. but for a year, you don't, you're don't. you not working here, you're not collecting any salary. In our contract, as I referenced a little bit earlier, so I might have gone too fast, we have provisions for a sabbatical leave where for four years you can put away a fifth of your salary. Mm -hmm. And your fifth year, or so you, sorry, for four years you put away a fourth of your salary. And for that fifth year you get all that. And you can go on sabbatical. And you go on sabbatical. That's something that's in our master agreement still today. Mm -hmm. Is that what Mrs. Um, yes, I'm saying. Her name she took a leave like this. She took a leave. Okay. She took a leave like right. this. We have two teachers up at U32 right now that are on one, well, one's a two-year leave and one's a one-year leave, but something like this. They aren't looking for salary, they're looking to do something else for a year. So whatever qualifications she has, to match those yep. same things? Yeah, yep. that's what we'd be looking for. Is she, since she does our math teacher leader program, math, yeah, math I mean, interventionist, we'd be looking right. for someone who's highly skilled in math instruction. Okay, we the same level Do you have somebody in mind within the school that would like to transfer to that position for a year, or you haven't really thought about it yet, or don't know? Um, I have to reflect a little bit more. I mean, this is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean like, no. sure, usually, like, usually they don't like yeah. things on the action agenda that haven't been this, I mean, I haven't, um, yeah, that means came today. Yeah. <laughs> no, sometimes, yeah. I mean, you know right away, okay, I, I have this person in mind, I know they can for less block for here and hire for the other position easier than a math specialist. I mean, it makes me think of what could possibly be, so um, I just had to have to think a little bit more. Especially with the implementing the new math program, I'm sure the support will need to be there for some of the classroom yeah, teachers. Yeah, and we're at Elmhurst first year quite a bit yeah. as a district math coach, so that's, I'm confident with Ellen's support. She's, yeah, she's a really valuable asset. Yep. That's my comment. Right. So I'll make a motion to accept or approve the leave of absence. Do you want to name? Or just as big as that? Um, I think we're fine without the name. Okay. I think that helps. I always think that helps personnel. That's my default. You know. Here. Like so we'll leave it as um, uh, <laughs> approve a one year leave of absence. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of $39,702.68. Are there any questions on the board orders? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Future agenda items. Um, 
if you're out here in the parking lot, you'd like to know. I mean, I, I literally, I can be the one to do that. I know how to do it to scale it off of the cost and get a square footage. Just to kind of give you a ballpark of. So yeah, I definitely think the parking lot should, okay. should be on there. Um, so May will definitely have an Act Forty Six update. Because um, um, I'll be, we'll have met <laughs> multiple times. So we, pro I probably will even, we will be at a point where we can bring some of those um, articles of agreement, so we can start having discussions as a board too. Well, two of us will be on the committee, but at least so that you can be in the loop, because they will go out to the town for a vote. So the more we understand them and the more we know what's going on and communicate with people, the better understanding they'll have. Mm -hmm. So. Aaron, do you think we'll have the open positions on the then? Yeah, so we'll probably have a person to come for, right? I mean, we'll bring a candidate to you, not the actual person, but yep. for a teaching, for the 3-4 teaching position that's open right now. Perfect. All right, is there any other piece that I'm missing for future agenda items? Is there any important? other things you normally do in May that it's nothing to do with transition that we haven't done? Um, I, we have a yearly calendar that we've been using for years okay. that uh, was developed when I first came in. And so Krista Mativier, my admin assistant, yes. she always looks at that. And what happens for Nicole and Julie to know, we sit down, the chair, Vera, Aaron and I will sit down a week before, and we actually, I usually have that calendar up on my laptop and say, okay, what have we always done in May? Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Yeah. It's not like we're making this up. We no, no I think you did. <laughs> and then we also we also take the agenda from the previous May and look at it and say, okay, what was on that? You know, and then. I just know you've been talking past, about the merger so yeah, much. Yeah. I don't know if there's no, but no, it's, it's a really fair question. Yeah, how do you keep yourself organized so you don't miss things? And that's a really fair question. So I think I was a little maybe too sarcastic in my response. But. So the other thing for future agenda item will be. Um, update on superintendent search because we'll have met um, the second yeah. for executive committee so we'll have an update on that and we should probably have a further discussion as to um, where callus is at and you would have to come with that information do i think as to right. this piece right. if we could put that on our may agenda we'll definitely as well. do that yep what kind of wording do you want for that why don't you say building access Community building access and easements. Okay, perfect. Okay. That works. Thank you. Am I forgetting any? I don't think. I think that covers everything. Yeah. All right. Board communication. Um, obviously, there's a lot of changes going on, and we've never really had like. One person's going to take care of front porch form consistently across the. And Bill definitely posts to front porch form, so that those pieces come from central office. But I don't know that we've ever really had a set um, designated board person that has taken on that role of communication piece. So um, this is something that we can think about until our May 13th meeting. But if somebody is willing to take on that role as we are rolling out, like. Uh, internal superintendent, changes within our school, the merger. It would be greatly appreciated if somebody wanted to take on that communications piece as to, even if you type up something weekly and send it to Lori, she'll send it out through the, it's not Blackboard Connect anymore, what is it now? Infinite Campus. Infinite yeah. Campus. <laughs> um, so if that's something that interests you or that, you know, sparks, uh, I would love to do that. I think it's a piece that we as a board, we ebb and flow with certain things. Like when it's bond time and we wanted to do renovations, we were great, but then we kind of fell off. Uh, so if there's, and maybe it's one of those we rotate through and once a month one of us takes on the task or something. I'm just looking for ideas, so just think about it for a month and you can revisit that okay. in May. If there's nothing else, then I think we are ready to adjourn. Does anybody else have any? That was a really fast meeting because we haven't met for a really long time. So I'll make a motion to adjourn by consensus at 6.56. Thank you.